2020 virtual Wethersfield Library Board meeting. Um, we want to make, have a special welcome to our new member, Amanda Drew, um, who's just been recently appointed to the board. Um, I wish we were able to greet you in person. It's not our typical warm welcome, but um, we're, we're glad to have you with us. So thanks for, thanks for volunteering. Thanks for stepping up. Um, and I, Amanda and I have met before through the neighborhood, but uh, we, she got to have her orientation this week, and so she's off to a great start. So, okay. Um, first item on the agenda is public comment. I don't see anyone from the public. Is there anything that came in? Any communications, Brooke? Or? Not that I am aware of. If okay. there is something that does come in, I'll forward it to the board, but I'm not aware of anything that's come in. Great. Okay. Then I'll just declare public comment closed. Um, any additions or changes to the agenda? Anything? Um, I know, sorry, go ahead, Brooke. I'll possibly move Amy Bellow down if she's able to appear. Yeah, we'll just, I think we can just um, table her to the end if possible. She's trying to make it into the meeting. She has a, had a conflict at seven o'clock. Um, okay, anything else? All right, so approval of the minutes. We have uh, minutes from um, two different meetings, April 28th and June 23rd. Um, so uh, let's start with April 28th. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes from April 28th? I think Hannah's saying. I, I make a motion, sorry, I was unmuting. <laughs> There's second. Second. Okay. Were there any changes or discussion? Anything? Okay. Do we have to take a roll call on this, Brooke? I uh, yes, it's best to okay. do a roll call vote on the video. All yeah. right. So um, we'll go through the roll, and if you could just abstain if you weren't present for the meeting. So uh, George. Oh, uh, aye. Uh, Lila is not here. Lori. You're giving me a thumbs up. Okay. Uh, Hannah. Aye. Uh, Peter's not here. Mary. And saying I wasn't there. Okay. Terry. Aye. And Amanda. Abstain. Abstain. Great. Okay. So, oh, and I'm I. All right. Good. Yeah. So that's April 28th. Now we will do June 23rd. Can I get a motion to approve June 23rd? Motion to approve. Terry, and a second? Second. Mary, okay. Any changes or additions to the agenda? I mean, to the uh, minutes? Uh, corrections, rather? All good? Okay, okay. Uh, we'll go through another roll. Thank you. Uh, George? Aye. Uh, Lori? Aye. Kiana? Abstain. Abstain. Peter's not here. Mary? Yeah, A. <laughs> <laughs> Terry? Aye. Aye. Amanda? Abstain. And uh, I'm an aye. So motion passes. Okay, moving right along. We good? All right. So, um, given that last month was Doreen's last meeting, um, and it is our time of year to nominate and elect new officers, um, we have a new slate of officers to be nominated. Um, I know we have at least one nomination for each um, office. Um, I'm happy to split the, the motion if there are any other nominations. Does anyone if anyone wants to identify another nomination, otherwise we can just approve the slate as one. Are we good? All right, Lori, can you, can we hear you? Can you hear me? Yeah, do you have a motion? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I have a motion to nominate Martha Keneally for chairman, George Kelly for vice chairman, and Layla Mandor for secretary. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, so Lori's made a motion to nominate Martha Keneally for chair, George Kelly for vice chair, and Lila Mandor for secretary. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Okay. Uh, I will close the nominations and uh, we'll do a roll call. Uh, 
What did I do with my roll two? Uh, George? Aye. Uh, Lori? Aye. Aye. Hannah? Aye. Uh, Mary? Aye. Terry? Aye. Amanda? Aye. And I'll vote in favor too. So motion carries. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you. And big shoes to fill. Big, big shoes to fill. And thank you to George and Lila for stepping up. Lila couldn't be here tonight, but she's um, going to do a great job as secretary. So, um, but uh, anyway, huge shoes to fill from Doreen. We'll see. Um, okay. Uh, next, do we have the friends report? Um, Carolyn's not with us this evening. Calling no. you now. Okay. And the only thing about the friends, it is my understanding that the friends do not intend to host a fall book sale. Understandably so. So right. that's, I don't have much more than that. Okay. Um, the other thing, we just want to thank the friends for their funding of summer reading. We, we had approved the money back in April, the request for the money back in April. They gave, I think it was $6,000 towards the summer reading program. Um, you know, and we've had still had good, great engagement. And I love the lawn signs everywhere. Um, and we have a little friendly competition going on even on the board with people trying to outread each other, though no prizes at stake. <laughs> so, <laughs> but and, um, and the prizes, the lawn signs, we had them remove the year. It said 2020 summer reading. We took that off so that we could use it next year. And then the books for summer reading um, that we purchased as giveaways, um, we have enough copies that we can utilize those. So that it's, it's even if we have very low numbers this year, which is what we kind of are anticipating, unfortunately, just given the state of, of things. Um, but we do have some engagement, which is good. Um, the, uh, we can use these materials for a longer period of time, which is good. And they're nice incentives. So. Great. Cool. All right. Thank you. Um, Amy hasn't joined us yet, so we'll just, um, if she makes it before the end of the meeting, we'll come back around to her report. Um, I just have a brief report. Um, again, a huge welcome to Amanda, and, and thanks so much for stepping up and volunteering. Um, we have a good amount of business to take care of tonight, um, but looking ahead to August, Brooke really doesn't have a ton for us. Um, and so we'd like to actually can, um, cancel the August meeting, give, our, give us all a well-deserved break from Zoom, the million Zoom meetings. Um, and so um, we'll plan to meet again on September 22nd will be our next meeting. Um, and one of the things we would normally do right around this year is start signing up for Corn Fest. But um, as a pre-COVID thing, Corn Fest was canceled. Um, I'm not sure what kind of event will come back, but um, we will not be having, there will be no Corn Fest today. So that would normally be, you know, a big outreach for us at this time of year. Um, so just a heads up about that. Um, because of that though, we haven't had an outreach meeting in a long time and, and certainly our engagement with the community is a, is a lot different right now. Um, so I'd like to also just think about scheduling an outreach meeting when we come back around in September, um, anyone who'd like to join to kind of brainstorm about how we can as a board do some outreach in this virtual environment or whatever we can do to, um, to support what the library is doing as we're gonna hear about the gradual reopening process. Um, and then the last thing I just want to say is a huge thank you to Brooke and the library staff. I know everybody has been thrilled to have the, um, the library reopen for holds and pickups and the, the efficiency with which you're handling that is really something. Um, but the library, if you've had a chance to stop by and see what's going on, they're doing all the preparation necessary to increase access. Um, and uh, it's really, it's a huge process. Um, but, you know, we all know, I don't think everyone realizes in the community sometimes we have like 500, four to 500 people who walk through the doors every day. And so it is a, it's a busy place and they're in order to make sure it's a safe and welcome environment for everybody. Um, there's a lot to be done. So thank you so much, Brooke, for everything. And, and please extend our thanks to the, um, the whole staff. Absolutely. For all you're doing. So that's it for me. Um, Brooke? Okay. So for the library director's report, um, I wanted to mention food for fines. 
Um, I'm so focused on reopening that I have, I've had conversations with Kathy Bagley about it, but I just have not been able to get that going yet. Perhaps we could do it for the month of August um, and make it a summer reading uh, incentive. So um, we intend to still do this, the food for fines that we normally do in July. We may just end up doing in August, um, but we've been just overwhelmed by other things. And so it hasn't quite made that priority, but we would like to help out social news services and the food bank uh, with that. Um, as far as reopening further, this is where we are. As, as um, hopefully you all know, the library reopened on Monday, June 15th for the limited service of holds pickup only by appointment. That's Monday through Friday between 10 and two. Um, a few of you have taken advantage of that. Um, and so has your fellow community members. Um, and so we're very, very happy to be able to offer that. We're fulfilling hundreds of holds a day um, and then calling and making appointments uh, with um, patrons. And, and so far it, it seems to have worked. Um, the library will continue to take a very cautious approach to a, a phased opening. Um, and furthermore, the our Central Connecticut Health District um, has advised us to open, reopen very slowly because you don't want to have to pull back as we are seeing other communities across the U.S. do. We don't want to have to do that. So um, the slower is the better. Um, we have taken into consideration guidance from just about everyone. Um, and so that includes a guidance given by the State Library um, the American Library Association, um, uh, the Health District. I had a walkthrough recently with last week with um, Charlie Brown, the director of that, of the Central Connecticut Health District. Um, we've listened to, I've listened to staff um, and gotten their feedback. Um, I've had um, Anthony, the fire marshal, come through, uh, Gary's come through. So, and then I'm taking into consideration guidance from retail establishments. Um, and what they're kind of uh, looking at. Um, and so that's a whole lot of guidance to kind of narrow it down to what we really is gonna be work here in Weathersfield at the library specifically. Um, but starting on Monday, August 3rd, in addition to our holds pickup by appointment, the library will add the following additional services and that's gonna be computer use by appointment, fax use, and copier use. Um, and I won't say the fax use is very high, um, but we've had a lot of requests, surprisingly, for uh, copier use. Um, maybe we're the cheapest copy in town, I'm not exactly sure. We've made a lot of referrals to the UPS store, um, but we will be adding uh, that in. Um, and these services will be offered Monday through Saturday, so we're also adding an, an additional day. Um, again, it'll be the hours of 10 to 2. Um, and other services, the big service that people really want is the ability to just walk in and grab their own material. And we're not looking to do this quite yet. I would say in another three or four weeks, we should be ready to go on that. I'm still waiting for plexiglass in the children's department. Um, and when we do reopen further for browsing, we'll be looking to offer evening hours, at least one night a week, um, possibly the three nights we're no, or normally open, five to nine. Um, and again, that's like the, the next phase after this initial one for the next couple of weeks. Um, we need to split the building hours, you know, say after Labor Day between 10 and two, and five and nine. Um, once school is in session, as you all know the dynamic, we have 50 to 75 seventh and eighth graders who descend upon this facility. And that's when after school activities are going on. And so it would only be exasperated, I suspect, because if any after school activities will be offered, it will be significantly reduced. And I suspect there's not going to be after school activities. Um, and we just cannot have that dynamic in the building. 
Also, there's an expectation with all the guidance given that you do frequent cleaning. Now, there's no definition of frequent cleaning, but I have, you know, several public restrooms um, that we would need to hit, and that would be bringing in our contracted um, custodial service to do that. Um, there is an additional cost to that, unfortunately, that I'm going to have to expend money on. And the staff are going to have to hit all of the high touch surfaces. So the contracted security is just going to be focused on the bathrooms, and the rest of us are going to be focused on the doorknobs, the hand, the handrails, you know, the computers, the tables, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, and if everybody, you know, does their bit, they're only really cleaning for 10 or 15 minutes, and it can get done very quickly. Um, but, you know, that's that's going to be a whole nother dynamic that we're going to have to build in. And then we could reopen for the public from five to nine. Then the cleaning crew comes in regularly after nine o'clock when they normally do anyway. And so that's kind of what we'll be looking at. I would say after Labor Day, um, I know that the Newington Public Library, it doesn't look like they're opening to offer anything beyond curbside till after Labor Day. Uh, Rocky Hill is kind of doing what we're doing. They just started, I think, this past week. Um, and Berlin is, is close to the same. Um, so we're all kind of on the same, within the health district, about the same. Some of us are more than others. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll see how it kind of progresses. Um, but we're, we're feeling... You know, every time I think we, I've worked out some logistic, then we, we end up pulling back a little bit. Um, a big concern that we have um, is how many families do you let into the children's department knowing that little kids don't know what social distancing is. Um, and, you know, it's nice to be able to come in as a family unit and do browsing. Um, do you let in one family unit down into children's for 15 minutes? Do you let, you know, two in? And so we're trying to kind of work that dynamic out. Um, so that's, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of what we're looking at. Uh, we are looking to implement overdue fines again when we get to that more browsing stage. So not, not in the next three weeks. Oh, uh, Amy's coming in. Um, in addition, we do not anticipate offering any in-person programs or any meetings until sometime in 2021. Um, we have every, basically every chair that's comfortable in this building has been removed from the public floor. The study rooms, instead of being able to accommodate four people for a small group study, it's going to have one chair. And so uh, we hope to utilize a couple of our study rooms. Another study room is being used to hold furniture. Um, benches have been removed. Um, stools have been removed. Um, so you basically cannot really come and sit down and, and, and read the newspaper. That dynamic is just not going to happen for the foreseeable future. Um, and so, and, and, and reports from other libraries who've gone to this stage are like, when you set it up to discourage people to hang around, they don't. Um, which is kind of, you know, we want to be a social gathering place, but Charlie Brown from the health district tells me no, <laughs> that's not good. Um, so it is kind of disappointing. Um, but I do think people just coming in and be able to say hi and pick up their holds, you know, is a wonderful thing. People have enjoyed that inner pleasant interaction. Um, so we hope to, you know, continue that, um, get the computers up and going, and then move into that next stage in the next few weeks. Um, staff are hanging in there. They're completely exhausted like everyone else in the planet. Um, but they're doing a good job. So I, I am pleased and I will be sure to uh, share the thanks to the board uh, with them. Uh, for those who are working remotely, uh, returning to the library has been a bit of adjustment. Um, as starting next week, 
Um, currently, the staff working remotely are off site for two days, but on site for three in house in the library. Um, and next week, that dynamic is going to change from four days on site. It'll become it'll become excuse me four days on site and one day remote uh, working. Um, again, that's like eight people. Um, and if you recall, uh, 16 non-union part-time staff had been officially furloughed, um, and we are starting to bring them back into the mix as we need help. We've needed their help this whole time. I've had work the whole time, but we just didn't want so many people within the facility. Um, and we are starting to bring them back in. Um, and then we go through training, like we need to take your temperature, you need to wear a mask, you need to wash your hands frequently, and, and going through that you need to make sure that you're social distancing and staying six feet apart. So there's been some people who have not been here since March, um, who are just not used to being in that type of dynamic in a workplace setting. And it's, it's you know, setting the expectations and, and, and showing them what we need them to do in order for everyone um, to stay safe. Um, we, we seem to be holding up pretty good with the PPE as we were in the, uh, the June meeting. And um, everyone's just transitioning to this new working world. Um, and and that's, that's kind of where we're at for um, reopening. Does anybody have questions about that? And Amy, I know you were late. Um, and I can type this up for you because I know you have a town council meeting and you may want to share that. Um, what I would love, I would love to share that, Brooke, and we can either have a, a conversation or okay. something in writing. Either would be great. And I apologize for being late, but I'm glad to be with you now. Okay. Um, but does anybody have questions? No. Okay. Um, a couple of things that I feel would be helpful um, that would make uh, as we move into this new uh, phased opening um, is a couple of revisions that I sent to you this uh, late this afternoon. So I apologize, that's on me. Um, a couple of proposed uh, revisions. And the first is for the behavior and environment policy. And I, and I, don't have the time or resources right now to revamp an entire policy, but I feel adding in the language um, in the behavior and environmental policy, environment policy, excuse me, all persons are required to follow all applicable local and state rules, regulations, and orders would help us with social distancing, face masks. It would just add a little bit more <laughs> Um, that something that we could report to in the unlikely events that we would get pushback. Um, and Gary has issued um, orders for town buildings and, um, and, and then there's, you know, Governor Lamont's executive order. Um, and so I felt this language and I did uh, talk it over um, with uh, George very briefly um prior to this meeting but i just feel like without revamping the entire policy that this line as a catch-all would be kind of helpful um uh, for us on my end i i agree and and you know it, it's not one thing we're, we were concerned about is not adding anything that ends up being a restriction in any way, but this still gives you the right as the director broke to issue directives, uh, you know, as they're needed. But uh, uh, I, I think this is only, this can be helpful. And uh, we're not I just have a question. Um, yeah. I, I read where you sent it out and you know, it says in red, all persons are required to follow blah, 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 blah. Um, the second paragraph after that, though, says no face coverings are allowed, <laughs> I noticed that. except for medical or religious reasons. Yeah. So, like that, oh and so that, again, that's written at a time I know. where we, you know, often for security purposes, we want to be able to see people. I, I agree, but if we're going to revise, 
Yeah. And even people wearing clown can cause a lot of people, you know, and during Halloween, if someone's in clown, that's a whole thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, um, but it can also be re interpreted as the medical reason is for everyone to wear it. It, it, it could be read the opposite way as well. Um, and so that was one of the big concerns I kind of had is what we had that in there. Um, but the medical reason is everybody should be wearing it. Um, and, and furthermore, there's, you know, orders under this to do it. Um, and so, yeah. Would you not want to change that line though? Not at this time. I would not. Um, I, I actually, I, I actually wouldn't because I believe it can be interpreted in two different ways. I think we've always been interpreting it in one way hmm. and not in the, the part other. where it references, sorry, the part where it references bodily hygiene and then BO body odor. If you just change that to hygiene, could it cover both body odor and wearing masks incorrectly and spitting and coughing? And could that cover any manner of hygiene if you change that line? I don't know that face mask is a hygienic. I know it's like a, yeah, but it's also, it's offensive and that's, it's not that it's offensive. It's unhealthy. If like you're coughing or you're not cut, your nose isn't covered. I, Still, I'm with, I always had the same question. I, as I'm reading it and I know we have, we've had some discussion about it, but I know I, I get Hannah's point here about, I mean, if George, I, you I, didn't, I, you didn't have a concern about that when you read it or. Uh, not for now. I, w one problem is, you know, we, we've already talked about the need to revise a lot of regulate, you know, of, of the uh, policies. And we're going to do that, as I understand it, during, during the year. Uh, this is a unique situation. And, uh, you know, I think there's enough in all the policies that gives Brooke the authority uh, <laughs> to follow the governor's uh, orders and require a face mask. And there'll be signs saying that that's required. Uh, I, I, the, it's, a, it's a bigger question of what we do uh, with the whole face mask uh, language. And we can deal with that, but I just don't think we have to do any more now than 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 what we have if people are confused or if somebody comes in and says you know this says no face mask and i'm not wearing one uh, they're not going to be allowed in the library that it, it's very let, let me ask this what if we switch the wording and it said no non-medical or non-religious face coverings are allowed like specify it has yeah, to be. be. But again, I, I just don't think that this is the time to uh, to make res revisions that are going to apply to all situations in the future. We, we're dealing with one unique situation. Uh, and, you know, we, we've got to spend some time on all the policies that need revision. <laughs> But if I, we're spending the time right now looking at this policy, right, like I, I'll, I understand what it means and I, we are changing a policy that says something in red and then two paragraphs down says, it sort of contradicts what we're trying to say, I believe. And so, I, you know, there are, there are people, there are individuals in the, you know, in greater Connecticut who are not wearing a mask because of a medical reason. And so now we're saying you need to follow it. But now well, no, there's an, there's an exception. There's an exception for medical. If somebody comes yeah. in and states there's a medical reason that they're not wearing a face mask, they are permitted in the building. Okay. That's the, I mean, that's the governor, that's the governor's order. Yeah, I know that. Um, I just, and, I just think the policy so, says two different things. Yeah. Well, what if we, what if we move this red sentence to say, no, 
Yeah, it won't be. No, no face coverings are allowed except for medical religious reasons, unless um, you are required to follow the applicable local and state rules, regulations, and orders. Well, and I think that I think that was one of my initial thoughts, Amanda, um, was to insert it closer to the face covering part. But in general, I'm trying to think also broader that right. all persons are, regardless of whether it's yeah. a face mask or whatever, a, you know, a flip flop rule or something like that, that this line covers all applicable local state rules, regulations, and order. And it's not necessarily tied to any one thing that we have listed elsewhere in the policy. So, was, should, what was my it, thought. Should it say that it supersedes all that person they're follow and those policies supersede any this policy that uh, anything is that does that do it? Not I don't think this in my opinion I don't think necessarily I was reading the first paragraph as an introduction. Uh, how I read it is the the first paragraph is an introduction. We're trying to create a safe, comfortable environment. Um, the board has this power, and one of the first rules is all persons are required to fall out applicable, da, da, da. And then the next rule is no flip-flops or, you know, whatever. Um, and so I was trying to insert that, like, if you can imagine this is kind of a list, everything after that first paragraph is kind of almost a list of things. Mm, um, mm. And that's, and I, so I placed it as the first one down. Now, when we rework this whole policy as part of, part of the year of policy revision, um, this whole thing needs, the, the entire thing needs to be reworked. Um, and we, you know, we're going to be utilizing um, Jack Bradley for that. We've already kind of started that process for certain things, but um, for certain policies, but yeah. Bless you. Can, so so that can we rational. say that we're, bless you. Sorry, I was trying to mute. <laughs> yeah. Well, so can we, I mean, so is it, would it, I share, I share the concern just because people are really picky about this mask thing and there's been a lot of discussion about it, let's just say. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder if we can, you know, if that's something we can move. I understand what you're saying. There's a broad every little bit and so if we change one line we have to change a bunch of can we maybe this is something we can kind of move can we just put it in both line? places can we put it can we have like a general like sentence at up top and then also say comma unless you know it's applicable to you know state statute or or whatever so then it's it's repeated so that you know it reminds everybody that this is yeah, Why can't we is... just say except for statutory medical or religious reasons? We just add in statutory or state uh, mandate. Well, it's all uh, medical or religious reasons. No, but if we I also think we say even how it is the proposed version for now, and then go back and look at it later on when we look at the policies, because it's not as though the general public is really going to have a ton of access to this policy. Like they're going to walk in not wearing a mask. We're going to tell them to put a mask on, and they're going to say, "I don't have to." And we're Brooke is going to say, yes, you do. You know, here's the policy. And then if they go into the policy, it does say you must follow right at the beginning. Um, do you think somebody's going to have this and really pick it apart before they go to the library? Really? <laughs> I but mean, and, and plus, it does say so, if you want to argue on it. Yeah. If, if wouldn't we have a sign it, up the door, outside the door? Or wouldn't we have a sign up? I mean, all we businesses do. have yeah. signs up now. We have people know that. Sign. All right. Yeah. I think so that supersedes. May I, may, I ask a question? may I ask a question? Instead of um, doing a proposed revision to your policy, would it help you, Brooke, if the library board just made a directive or an order that um, all persons are required to follow all applicable local and state rules, regulations, and orders, um, you know, regarding uh, public health, including masks, social distancing, whatever, during this pandemic. Do, do you have to actually revise these 
this policy? Could you make a directive or an order like Gary has done and like the governor's done? They haven't like changed their their policy, their legislative policies as much as created orders. So I would, and George, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not aware that the library can issue a a directive or an order. That's really the town manager or the governor. Well, I, I guess what Amy is suggesting is is we authorize you to. Uh, but it really, what I think what it comes down to is uh, you're authorized to put up a sign that says you have to wear a mask. So uh, under, you know, con consistent with the uh, current orders from the governor, however, however we want to say that. It's just like a store has a sign saying uh, masks are required. No matter what this policy says, and which is something we can look at down the road, uh, that that takes precedence. That's the policy. That's that's the rule we're going to follow. Uh, and I don't see anybody uh, criticizing or complaining us or you, Brooke, if what you do is enforce that order. Uh, and and does that make it then broader? Like, it, and it applies to. The, the example you gave Amy was social distancing, which would also, we'd also want to make sure people were social distancing and doing this. And so we want to make sure you're covered on all of those bases. Does that, if it is a, if we have a resolution to, what, what did you say, to, to post that, something like that? Motion to do that? I, I, I know. We, I know we're, we all want to do what helps you the most, Brooke. Yeah. And and so we're not trying to. We're not trying. We're, I think I, I hear the concern that we, by having to something that it actually undermines what we're trying to do. Um, I know the library board can make rules, and the and the poli and that you're empowered under the Connecticut general statutes to do what's ever in 11-32. And so whenever I'm citing something, I'm citing library board policy. Um, and I, and I, so I, I would, and you could, you know, and I'm, so uh, I just don't want, like, it, it, I, I think it would, I don't know how appropriate it would be for the library board if, if you were able to issue a directive, like, it, it doesn't feel appropriate to me and I would. All right, so maybe up. that's some, uh, is that something we want to table for the, uh, and we just yeah. hold, put a hold on. And is there something that we could do to tweak this, this language that makes it more, that makes it broader or more comfortable, like, saying that that this policy supersedes, you know, or, or specifying non that we're that people know non medical or non religious masks are allowed. I mean, would you say out the word no, face coverings are allowed. Well, you know, yeah, but mean, so that's the whole problem. We can't do that uh, for reasons that Brooke has uh, just as a matter of policy and right. libraries policies. We can look at, I think, how- can I, Wait, can, George, I'm sorry, can I, can I interject real quick? And I, I, I'm, I'm so sorry, and I- I'm sorry, and I'm so I, We're looking at this policy now, and then we're also potentially gonna look at the policy later this year, correct? Oh, yeah, this is not, this is oh. meant to give- So why would we not just make the policy right now to speak currently to COVID situations? I add the line in where it's currently read, which I know it won't be read when we see the policy. I'm sorry. I like Amanda when she said it was red. I like the red wording. But would we not just to say that right now? Because I don't think we do that with policies. A policy is, is meant to apply, you know, for the next five or 10 years. Brooke, but this, is I, un I, this is uncharted world. Yeah, which I is why, which is I why understand. Brooke, that's why Brooke can say and can post a sign on the door of the library 
uh, consistent with what the town manager has already said and what the governor has already said. If we do anything else, we are not complying with the law. All right. So I, I, I think I understand. I think we're at a little bit of an impasse on it, but I think we're going to, I'd like to ask for the question to be proposed and what, we can take a vote on it. I think what, what Brooke is asking is that we make this provision um, and that we would come back around to it down the road to look at the, the policy more holistically and take into account all other changes. And maybe what we'll ask is that that kind of gets done sooner than later so we can have a better look at it. Um, so I'm just, can, just we're going to need to have a vote. So can I just we'll, ask one quick question. Yeah, it's a real minor question. Down the the bottom where we you're there's a listing of um, 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 examples of misconduct. The yeah. very first one, any behavior which um, disrupts use of the library or interferes with the library's operation, assault. Assault is assault. supposed to be. Uh, the first thing listed below library operation is an end sentence and I don't know why assault assault should be the first thing under that. Just a pretend there's a period the formatting issue. Word operation or a cold. <laughs> Move it down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So does someone want to make a motion? So I just think it would be wise if we could put this on the list to review to review sooner rather than later so that at least we can get this out and see how people respond to it. Because if we do have an issue with somebody making this stink about this, at least we're able to come back and, and, and revisit it. All right. And this is on the list, all the policies. There was a calendar. Some of you have seen it. <laughs> And that is, you know, that ship has sailed at this point. And, um, but I was just trying, all I'm trying to do is make a quick revision without dramatically changing the yeah. content of anything else in here, because this severely needs to be updated, made far more simple than it is. Um, and, you know, we've already are kind of working with the town attorney and looking at various policies. This is a really big one to change um, and you know but I felt like this line was a catch-all enough um, that didn't dramatically change it um, so yeah. I think the line is good Brooke I think my my thought is just the following line I know absolutely I, that's, I have that's, that's, I, believe me the line I think is is what it needs to say right now. I just, it's the, it's the other line about the face coverings. Yeah. 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 Okay. Do we have and a I, And I feel like the face coverings almost shouldn't even be in there at all to begin with. And so like that whole list, um, this is a really in-depth list and you can't list everything. I mean, yeah. to me, it's any behavior probably what's the biggest the problem. operational library yeah. and you're out. I mean, that's, that's the line. <laughs> that's the policy. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, everything else, because you can't think of everything. So yeah. this needs to be seriously um, revamped. I mean, I've had to have discussions with teens no vaping. Well, it says no smoking. Oh, like, we're really going to have this discussion? Like, <laughs> <laughs> stop. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. All right. Good so, discussion. Good discussion. Good discussion. <laughs> this is like policy. We need a whole meeting about policy. <laughs> it's always like we need a. <laughs> Remember when we did the financial policies? All right. So, um, <laughs> All right, so do we have a uh, motion to approve the change in the behavior and environmental policy? I'll make that motion. Thank you. I'll second. There a second. Okay, any I'll further second. discussion? She said tre with trepidation. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll take the roll again. I'll start at the bottom. Amanda? Aye. Uh, Terry? Aye. Uh, Mary, we lost Mary. Uh, Hannah? <laughs> Aye. Lori? Aye. Uh, George? Aye. And I'll uh, vote in favor too. Okay, thank you. It's a good discussion. Okay, and we'll let's, hopefully we can go more quickly through the next one. Go ahead, Brooke. 
Um, the next one is a slight revision to the internet access and use policy. Um, and it's towards the bottom where uh, the library director is authorized to implement other reasonable restrictions as to the use of the library's computers and or the library's network. And then it goes into, in general, the use of the computers. It's on a first come first serve basis. Um, and then the limitations are kind of in, in there. I feel like this has really worked since I have been here. These, um, you know, the one hour you get, uh, you know, additional time is at the discretion and when the availability, we've had to cite this a couple of times. You think pe people would think they're entitled to more than one hour a day. I'm concerned that we may have to further limit this down given that I have to do social distancing between computers and there's less computers available for use. Um, and if um, we may need to do further restrictions that you can only have an appointment a week or, or something like that. Um, I don't know that we'll have to go that far, um, but I felt that, um, that this kind of captures everything. It could also work um, if we kept the in general and at the end of this paragraph that the library directors authorized to implement other reasonable restrictions. Um, and if you notice at the top in the first paragraph, there's a line in there that says the purpose of this policy is to ensure the best use of and access to the internet for the greatest number of users. Um, so you have some people who will monopolize and try to take up the whole day. And we just, we really can't have that dynamic going on. And um, where we just start to restrict people more than we do now. Right now, we allow people 600 minutes a day, which is like 10 hours. Um, we're looking to really limit that to 10% of that, which is 60 minutes, like that. And that's a, that is a dramatic change. Um, you know, and so I, I think that this sentence could work well before or after um, this particular paragraph. Um, you know, the, the library staff has a lot of discretion to begin with in this paragraph, um, but sometimes I may need to limit the Wi-Fi. I mean, it, you know, so it just, it just kind of depends on the situation. So, um, again, this is another policy we're going to have to, you know, look at and, and revise at some point in the near future. Um, but I felt that this sentence was broad enough and general enough. Um, the placement could be before or after again. Um, okay. And reasonable was so I didn't get carried away. <laughs> yeah, I think it could go at the end. Okay. okay. And if we want to keep it the line in general. Yeah. Yeah. And then if we wanted to sound like lawyers, we could say, notwithstanding the foregoing, the library director is authorized. But I mean, that's the kind of language <laughs> you don't really want to have in a policy that people are expecting to read. So it would read, in general, the use of the library's computers first come first serve, blah, blah, blah. And at the end of that paragraph, the library director is authorized everything you read. Yeah. Okay. That's what I would suggest. Okay. Yep. Are there questions or concerns about that? Or why I'm, why I'm doing it? No, I don't. All right, any, any further discussion on this one? I think considering the limited use, it's very sensible. So there's a limited availability. Uh, can we have a motion to um, approve the change to the internet access and use policy as, as discussed with the line being moved to the end? I motion. Second. Second. And uh, any uh, further who, discussion? Who made the motion? Hannah? Hannah. I did, George. And second? It was Amanda. 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 Yep. Okay. Any, any further discussion? Okay. Um, we'll go down the, we'll go through uh, with the vote, Terry? Aye. Amanda? Aye. Uh, I'll vote aye. Uh, George? Aye. Lori? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. Great. Okay. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brooke. And I know you put a lot of thinking into those. So thanks for talking it through with us.
Um, all right. <laughs> Seth, thank you to George. Yeah, and thank you to George, right, for your, as always. Um, so finance committee, um, we had a finance committee meeting last week, week before, um, and Andrew Salek from FIA, FIA um, gave us uh, our quarterly update, and it was surprisingly good, it, all things considered. Um, the last time we had discussed things, we were really underwater, and um, we had some very fortuitous changes in our portfolio that uh, helped us rebound and take advantage of the rise in the market. Um, and so we actually came out ahead. Um, and we'll talk about, we'll talk about that when we get to the uh, Shulman withdrawal. But um, so thankfully, um, our investments have been, um, you know, holding steady or have shown some improvement. So that was all good news from, uh, from Andrew. And as always, um, he does a great job watching out for our interests. So we appreciate that. Um, Brooke, you have the year-end budget transfers that you want to tell, tell us about? Um, I want to actually, before we get to that, if we could oh. start, I'm sorry, uh, with just current fiscal year. So fiscal year 2021, I sent you a budget report dated July 24th. Um, and you can see here that this is, um, so it's the current fiscal year. We just got started. Um, Mike O'Neill, he's already pulled out the pe pension and def uh, the pension money. <laughs> he's already tagged it. So that's gone. Um, and then we made our payment on office machinery services, which is really our RFID, Bibliotheca self-check machines. That's a July 1st. So we we get tech support and office machinery gets hit hard and fast <laughs> at the beginning of the fiscal year. Um, a lot of the contracts come due on, on, on they're, they're, they start July 1st through the end of the fiscal year, which is fantastic. Um, but we're already 14% spent out. Normally they haven't processed as much and we're usually at like three or 4% spent out. <laughs> so it happened very quickly. Um, at some point, Mike will also tap possibly health insurance. And one day that sometime during the year that just vanishes. <laughs> And it's just gone. So, um, you know, it just depends on when he's looking to pull money out um, it, it, for certain things. So, um, you know, it is what it is. So uh, that's where we are in the current fiscal year. Um, so any questions about that? Okay. And then the uh, year in transfer. So the next uh, report you received or the other one is the financial report for July 24th um, for the end of the fiscal year, 1920. And we have $23,245.11 left over. Um, Mike O'Neill won't accept the 11 cents. Um, that doesn't exist in his world with rounding. Um, much to Elaine, the office manager's chagrin. Uh, <laughs> so she wants it down to the penny, um, but we were right on. So we are, um, I believe it's 98.9%, 98.9% spent out, um, which rounds up to 99. Um, and so my recommendation for the year in transfer, let me just pull up my exact, Oh goodness, my exact language. Hold on a second. I have so many papers here. So we're looking at the number of 23,245. And this is a recommendation for, um, for town council to accept. So they may not accept. This gets rolled up into a bigger recommendation you know, per, uh, that presents to town council at year end transfers. That meeting's on Monday. Um, and I am recommending that we move $2,878 of unexpended fiscal year 2019 2020 life library operating funds to the library's compensated absences account. 
and to, to approve the lapsing of any unexpended funds over these amounts, over that amount to the town's general fund balance. And that amount that would be reverting back to the town's general fund is 20,367. So can I ask a question? Yeah, oh, yes. What is a library compensated account? Okay, so that is where we have set aside um, money if suddenly everyone who was eligible to retire and they all had say eight weeks of vacation saved up, which is the max they can have. Um, if they suddenly um, said, I'm retiring, you wouldn't necessarily want that to hit your operating budget mm -hmm. at one shot. Um, there are some people who have a lot of sick leave months worth who've accrued it and are entitled to use it. So God forbid something happened to them and they were out for four months or, or, or something like that. You would probably want to replace that person because they're not, you know, a temporary replacement and you would use the operating money for that and start to pay the sick employee out of compensated absences. In order for me to tap compensated absences, I come to the library board for a vote uh, on the use of that. We have also in the past used it to pay out, um, it, it, was, it was right when I started, there was a labor, a, a long, a long, I wanna say a long-term disability claim and it went to the union and it went to a, a hearing and arbitration and an amount, you know, there was an agreement of an amount and instead of it coming out of the library's operating money, it came out of compensated absences. Do you know um, how much is in that account? Currently we have 71,000. And so I'm looking to put it at 74,500. 74, um, and uh, a lot of, and, and ideally you're really trying to compensate for active, you know, vacation and sick leave. That total amount is about um, $180,000. So we're about 50%. We're pretty good. We're pretty good. Be, um, you know, um, and usually if an, an employee is leaving, they get paid, you know, they get paid out if they're entitled to it, they get paid out their vacation, um, their accrued leave that they're entitled to take. And if it's like a week or two, we just do it out of operating money. But if it gets to be a big, big amount, um, that's where you start to go into compensated absences. Um, so it doesn't necessarily hit your operating. Um, I think this is becoming, over time, um, in municipalities or nonprofits, this is becoming less and less of a problem because people don't necessarily earn as much vacation. And then the town many, many years ago, rightly um, cat, like you have to use your vacation. We're only gonna pay you out a maximum of two years worth of accrued leave, which is about eight weeks of vacation. So that really capped it because they were getting into a lot of trouble of having to do these massive payouts of people who apparently never went on vacation or they were accruing so fast they couldn't use it. Um, and then people in some organizations or some municipalities, they would pay out sick leave. That's not the case here, but they can add the time on to, um, they can add the time on for retirement purposes. There's some caveats there of how to, they can do that, but they don't get paid out their sick leave, um, but they can add it to the retirement time somehow. Um, so it's, it's becoming less and less because the town has previously addressed it because it was, it was a problem. So, um, a lot of our staff, um, use, uh, vacation and sick during this time. Um, and we permitted it and it actually lowered our vacation accruals down quite a bit because they use their time, which is good. I mean, you want people to use their time. It's just a shame you know, some of it was based on fear, obviously so. Um, and they didn't have a nice vacation. They were at home scared. <laughs> um, 
but you know, we try to be liberal with their use of that. Um, so does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And okay. I do have some staff who are young and um, I, I would say uh, they're, not, they're under 50 years of age. They have massive amounts. Of and if they get ill, it's going to hurt. <laughs> it, you know, it hurts them, hurts us. We feel bad for them. Um, but on the financial side, it's a hit. Um, so. Okay. So any other I have a quick questions? Question. I, yeah, I just have a quick yes. question. And I don't know, Brooke, if you have this number available. Um, minus the 2000 or whatever, that's going to move to the other fund. How much did we return to the town last year? Um, I don't have that on me. But remember, I did have the last couple of years, I had absences at a manager level or a librarian level. Um, and in, in previous years, we've re, um, We've, we've put money away into the library reserve account, which is like capital projects or, yep. you know, whatever. Um, and we have 150,000 of that currently. We're not looking, I'm not looking to add that to this year because I cannot imagine that a library project <laughs> is going to be a top priority in the next year or two. Just, yeah. just a guess um, that capital projects in general and as much as I would like for our project, as important as they are, um, there may be other very pressing financial needs um, okay. the town is, is, it will be facing without question um, in the next couple of years. Um, and Amy, at any time, chime in. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just, that's just a guess. I don't have an eight ball, but um, yeah, and, so, and, and I can't imagine that even if I put money away that they could fund another portion of it. Yep. No, thank you. I just wanted, I, I sort of wanted, I think, more of what you just said than the original 20 that went back to the town. So thank you. Thanks. Okay. All right, good. All right, do we have then a motion? Um, do you want me to just read it to move $2,878 to compensated absences and then authorize the transfer of 20360 up to $20,367,000 in unexpended Fiscal, is that it? And I, I would say actually, if the language could be and to approve the lapsing of any unexpended funds over that amount. And not oh, so just go with, yep, yeah, I would say just go with a uh, motion to approve $2,878 uh, being moved to compensated absences and the lapsing of any amount over that to the um, general fund. Correct. I'll make the motion. Move. As long as I don't have to repeat. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to repeat it. <laughs> and uh, okay, any further discussion? All right, let's go through our list. Uh, Amanda? We have a second. Aye. Oh, Aye. second. I'll, no, we yeah, sorry. Second. Amanda, yeah, we had it. Aye. Got it, George? Yep. Um, Terry? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Lori? Yep. Uh, George? Aye. Aye, and I'm in favor too. Okay, motion carries. Great. And then uh, the Chauvin Fund, Brooke. Okay, based on the June 30th statement, and it's going to be, um, we have three, and it's account number ending in 0602. So there's two accounts, um, Amanda, just for your reference. Um, and, and, and so it's the, the one that ends in account 0602. Yeah. Um, and our end of year or their Ju the end of June 30th, we had $316,000. The finance committee met on July 7th or 8th. I can't yes. see the exact date, the beginning of July. And we had a more up-to-date and it was in the $318,000 range, but our policy on the states, we base it off the June 30th statement. We pick a point in time and that's the point in time that we base it off of. Um, so um, we discussed it with the finance committee um, because it did go down 
and then it rocketed back up. Um, and so uh, I would like to ask the board for, um, for us to withdraw $15,000 um to be the the withdraw for for the you know the showman withdraw um that we it would we're not we're just uh, authorizing the amount and not the use at, at this time it's just the the yearly withdraw um so we we'll, we authorize FIA to pull out the money out of the accounts um and I, I would like to pull out $15,000 where does this money go once it's been withdrawn? It goes to the town. Um, it requires uh, two signatures to authorize the withdrawal, just so you're aware. Um, and uh, it's uh, a member of uh, the library board, one of the, and, and either Mike O'Neill or myself. Um, and that is um, the process and it goes directly to the town and it sits in a town account, um, and then we, then I come back to the board and say I would like to withdraw, um, you know, two thousand of this for ancestry or whatever the purpose is, or for the adult collection, um, or something like that. Um, it can only be used for adult uh, resources, so I can't make a withdrawal for children's material um or something like that i can't do or, or teen um but it's for the it's it's targeted specifically for the adult collection um and we always try to keep at least three hundred thousand dollars in there um and it's meant to be utilized um and does that answer your question amanda yeah do are we required i'm, so, I'm sorry if i ask a lot of questions i'm sorry <laughs> Um, are we required to spend it all at once or will we have like a spreadsheet, a breakdown, like we've got like $4,300 left and you know, whatever. Yeah, just, just so you know, Amanda, last meeting we voted to authorize the actual expenditure of some of the funds that were withdrawn last year. Last year. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they have to be used just because of this particular uh, the language of this bequest, it has to be used on adult uh, materials. Uh, Does it have to be used if we withdraw it in 15, like it has to be if you spend the 15 this year or um, no? Do we have any left over from last year? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. And Do we I, have a spreadsheet of that? Are we able I, to look at that? So I have- Or is that just the finance committee? The finance committee has seen that from time to time but I can pull that information for you. And I work with the finance department to get to that. And we do track the expenditures of that. Um, and the, the person in finance, um, they've been working remote quite a bit because um, I'm due to check in with them on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, and I, and I think it was maybe the, it was either the June or April meeting like George was saying, where I asked for $15,000 to spend on online resources. And I know that I spent over 2,000 on Mingo languages. Um, and so I do know that I've already done 2,000, I have 13,000, but that was last year's withdrawal. Right. Um, okay. So this is just to pull it out of basically our accounts that are sitting with the, you know, over at Charles Schwab, pull them out and then um, get it over to the town so that I can quickly, you know, but I have to come back to the board for this particular 15,000 and what I want to do with it. And I, it could be only a $7,000 ask or something like that. So, but we can certainly get that breakdown of what's left and what hasn't been expended. Yeah, um, I'm not trying to like oversee or I just, I like numbers. Yeah, I, yeah. I have OCD about that stuff, so I apologize. No, it's good. Yeah, I mean, the, this has been, committee. Yeah. <laughs> no, right, right. The, yeah, you just volunteered for something. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this has been a um, this has been a great gift, obviously, to the library that Jane Shulman request, and um, it's been over a number of years that we've had, uh, you know, a lot of different things, and so it, and it's a good touch point to say, well, what have we spent it on, and where do we, where can we go, and um, and as a result, we actually this past year had renamed the community room after Jane Shulman in her honor for 
we're a tremendous gift to the community. So, um, so okay, all good. So, uh, can we get a motion to withdraw fifteen thousand from the Shulman account based on the June thirtieth, uh, twenty twenty statement? Motion. Terry. I second. 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 Thanks, Hannah. Any further discussion? Okay, uh, I'm going to be in favor. George, how about you? Uh, aye. Lori? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Uh, Terry? Aye. And Amanda? Aye. Great. Okay. Motion carries. Anything else? We went over time. Dorming's going to be. <laughs> <There's a lot. laughs> um, all right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, so nothing else can, uh, do we have to have, can we just give a thumbs up for a motion? We'll have a motion to adjourn. Well, does Amy, Ms. Bello want to say anything? Oh, sorry, Amy, I apologize. We, we, pat, we blew past you. No, no go ahead. you have an update. I, I spent a lot of time talking. I enjoy listening to, um, <laughs> Amanda, welcome. It's nice to meet you, uh, virtually, but it's nice to meet you. Um, town council. Uh, update. We've had some light agendas because of um, COVID and the town hall being closed to the public. Um, just some highlights. In June, um, we renewed a dial ride expansion grant and we also um, renewed our financial software with Tyler Technologies from Munis, which is our financial system that um, I'm sure Brooke is familiar with, along with Karma, our liability auto and property insurance coverage. Um, you know, it's exciting work being on this. Um, and we also um, found out that our town clerk is retiring, and she, I believe, has already stopped working, but her, I think her official last day is at the end of this month. Um, and then in, that was in June, and then our July meeting, we appointed folks to boards and commissions. So thank you, Amanda, for joining, and Terry and Lori for being appointed. Um, that we are um, starting a social justice coalition. It was formed by the town manager and the superintendent of schools. Uh, elected officials were not involved in the creation of the social justice coalition. Um, they've formed a steering committee that will be meeting, and um, we are looking for community input beginning in um, September. I hope that the library board and director will be actively involved in that because I think there's great opportunities for the library um, with that coalition. So that's all I that's all I have for you. All right, any questions? Okay, thank you. <laughs> sure. All right, now we'll have a, a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second? Second. All right. Second. All right. Well, can we give it? So <laughs> I'll go through the roll so it's official. I'm, for, I'm in favor of adjourning. George, how about you? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Lori? <laughs> uh, Hannah? In favor. Yes. Uh, Terry? Aye. And Amanda? Aye. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Brooke. Thanks, Amy. And um, so we're, again, we're not going to meet in, um, we're not meeting in August, so we'll see you in September for our next full meeting. All right. Take care, okay. everybody. Great. Bye. Thanks. Okay. Good night, everyone. Take care. Good night. Bye.